Navy's 12 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are among the most potent expressions of American military power. In recent years, though, there has been growing concern that changing mission requirements and enemy capabilities may make carriers more vulnerable to attack. This study analyzes the steps adversaries would need to take to execute a successful attack. It concludes the carriers are likely to be highly survivable for many years to come, barring major tactical blunders, and that carriers are becoming more resilient over time. The first step in attacking a carrier is to find it. Most potential adversaries would have difficulty doing this as long as the carrier remains in the open sea, takes prudent evasive actions, and actively counters efforts at detection. If a carrier is actually detected, the next step an enemy must take is to establish a continuous target track. That is necessary because a carrier is likely to be far from the location where it was first detected by the time weapons arrive there. Few if any nations today possess an assured capacity to track carriers continuously. All of the relevant methods radar, electronic eavesdropping, electro-optical and acoustic sensors have major drawbacks, such as high cost, vulnerability to preemption, and inability to precisely discriminate. While that may change over time, aggressors will still face a daunting task in penetrating the layered defenses of a carrier battle group. The most significant threats to carriers are cruise missiles, wake homing torpedoes, ballistic missiles and mines, but cruise missiles are unlikely to penetrate the battle group's integrated air defenses and few potential adversaries are capable of employing submarines or torpedoes effectively. Ballistic missiles lack necessary targeting features and mines are easily dealt with using a variety of existing and prospective methods. The intrinsic resilience of large deck carriers further mitigates the threat posed by adversaries. A unique capability the United States Navy operates 12 large deck aircraft carriers that are the centerpiece of America's maritime force structure and warfighting strategy. Each carrier hosts a wing of 70 aircraft, which if necessary, can be launched at the rate of one every 30 seconds. The Navy believes that by the end of the current decade, a typical carrier air wing will be able to precisely target over a thousand separate aimpoints, many hundreds of miles from the carrier in a single day. No other country in the world possesses such a capability. Aircraft carriers are the most visible expression of America's will to shape global politics and discourage aggression. But it is precisely the visibility and capability of these vast warships which displace 97,000 tons, carry nearly 6,000 personnel, and have flight decks measuring in excess of 4 acres that periodically lead to debate about their survivability. Ballistic missiles, air-breathing threats manned aircraft and cruise missiles are not the only danger carriers may face from above. Three dozen countries outside the Atlantic Alliance possess tactical and theater-range ballistic missiles including China, Iran, Iraq, Libya and North Korea. Ballistic missiles reach their intended targets much faster than cruise missiles and thus may diminish the defensive advantage conferred by aircraft carrier mobility. The U.S. Navy expects to deploy effective defenses against all classes of tactical and theater ballistic missiles by the end of the current decade, largely through the upgrade of existing sensors and weapons, for example, upgrading software for the Aegis combat system and equipping Hawkeye early warning aircraft with an infrared search and track sensor, would greatly reduce the challenge of tracking hostile ballistic missiles, particularly when networked with other joint assets already in place or under development. Moreover, the threat posed to carriers by ballistic missiles over the next 20 years appears relatively minor. The ballistic warheads of potential adversaries lack the terminal guidance or maneuvering capability that would enable them to home in on carriers during the final moments of flight. Such warhead seekers are very difficult to build due to the high temperatures and speeds associated with atmospheric re-entry, but without those features attackers would have to use thousands of warheads in barrages in order to have some hope of harming a moving aircraft carrier, unless nuclear warheads were used, a step few enemies are likely to be able or willing to take. 
No prospective adversary has the resources required to expend thousands of ballistic missile warheads in attacking a single aircraft carrier. Even if one did, it would be a poor tactic, possibly costing more to execute than the price of the carrier itself. Until the very challenging task of developing a terminal guidance and maneuver capability for ballistic missiles is solved by some rival, this is probably the least important threat carriers face. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said concerning the danger posed to land bases by ballistic missiles, owing to the larger size and greater vulnerability of such bases. Penetrating sea defenses. Faced with the daunting challenge posed by integrated air defenses and the operational limitations of available aerospace munitions, adversaries might seek to attack a carrier from the sea. Using mines or torpedoes launched by submarines, the U.S. Navy has developed a layered defensive system to deal with these threats too, and its warfighting advantages in the undersea environment are at least as pronounced as the edge it holds in aerial combat. The most ubiquitous seaborne threat to aircraft carriers is drifting or tethered mines. Virtually every literal power has some capacity to employ mines, and over a dozen countries export them. Mines are cheaper to buy and easier to use than other munitions, but under the right circumstances can do comparable damage. And although they tend to be fairly simple mechanisms, the performance of newer mines benefits from the same digital technologies enhancing other categories of weapons. However, mines suffer from several intrinsic limitations. Bottom mines are ineffective in water deeper than 600 feet, the depth typically found more than 100 miles from shore, and floating mines tethered to the bottom are relatively easy to detect in water of that depth. Moreover, tens or hundreds of thousands of mines are required to effectively see the carrier operating area in the open sea. Once released, the mines pose at least as great a threat to an adversary's vessels as they do to the warships in a U.S. carrier battle group. Mines present a greater threat in shallow water where they are harder to detect, and in choke points like the Straits of Hormuz, the Navy plans to operate its carriers in such areas only when they have been cleared of mines and has made extensive investments in various mine detection and neutralization systems. By the end of the current decade, every carrier battle group will include helicopters equipped with the Airborne Laser Mine Detection System ALMDS, the Organic Airborne and Surface Influence Sweep OASIS, the Airborne Mine Neutralization System, the Rapid Airborne mine clearance system, Remix, and the towed mine detection system. Battle groups will also deploy unmanned underwater vehicles capable of autonomously finding and destroying mines. so many mine countermeasure systems organic to battle groups, there is little chance a mine will actually strike a carrier. Even if it did, the likelihood of serious damage is minimal. Nimitz-class carriers have thousands of separate compartments and heavy side armor that would deflect or contain the explosive force of mines. Larger ships are generally able to absorb more damage without being disabled, and nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are the biggest warships ever built. So while the proliferation of mines among potentially hostile literal powers is a real problem, it poses less danger to aircraft carriers than to other types of warship. Aircraft carrier invulnerability. Aircraft carriers, even large deck, nuclear powered ones, are not invulnerable. But when the full range of challenges a potential aggressor faces in mounting a successful attack are reviewed, it becomes clear there are few military systems more survivable. The vessels are hard to find and harder to track. Their multiple layers of sophisticated air and sea defenses are difficult to penetrate. And even if an attacker manages to target and hit a carrier, the intrinsic resilience of the ship makes serious damage improbable. That is not just a theoretical point. In 1969, the USS Enterprise, a nuclear-powered carrier still in the active fleet, today suffered a catastrophic accident during which nine of its 500-pound bombs detonated. The amount of explosive power released was roughly equal to that of half a dozen Russian cruise missiles. Although 27 sailors were killed and over 300 injured, the Enterprise could have resumed strike operations within hours. <laughs>